Caesar in the Bible? Was it Julius Caesar? Let's delve into this fascinating topic. Often when we think of Caesar, the image that comes to mind is that of Julius Caesar, the Roman ruler known for his military prowess and political cunning. However, in the Bible, the term Caesar is not a name, but a title. This title was adopted by many Roman rulers after Julius Caesar, thus leading to some confusion. In the biblical context, Caesar refers to the reigning Roman emperor at the time of the events described. So, when we encounter the term Caesar in the Bible, we aren't necessarily reading about Julius Caesar himself. The identity of the Caesar mentioned can vary, depending on the time and context of the biblical passage. So we understand that Caesar isn't a person per se but a title. But who were these Caesars mentioned in the Bible? The New Testament mentions Caesar three times, referring to three different individuals. In this fascinating world of biblical narratives, we find the figures of Julius Caesar, Augustus Caesar, and Tiberius Caesar. Each of these Caesars played a significant role during their reign, and their influence extends into the biblical times. Firstly, let's introduce Julius Caesar. While Julius himself is not directly mentioned in the New Testament, his influence was monumental. Julius Caesar was a military general who rose to power through a series of political maneuvers and military triumphs. He oversaw the end of the Roman Republic and the dawn of the Roman Empire. Interestingly, it's his adopted heir who has a more direct connection to the Bible. Moving on we come to Augustus Caesar, Julius Caesar's adopted son. Augustus is the first Roman emperor mentioned by name in the New Testament. It's during his reign that we see the birth of Jesus Christ, a significant event recorded in the Gospel of Luke. The Bible tells us that a decree from Augustus Caesar prompted Joseph and Mary to travel to Bethlehem, where Jesus was born. Last but not least, we have Tiberius Caesar. Tiberius is the Caesar on the throne during the ministry of John the Baptist and the crucifixion of Jesus. The Gospel of Luke refers to him directly, providing a timeline that places Jesus' baptism and the start of his ministry in the 15th year of Tiberius's reign. Each of these Caesars, in their own way, played a part in shaping the world of the New Testament. Their decisions, their decrees, and their reigns set the stage for some of the most influential events in biblical history. Their stories intertwine with biblical narratives, offering historical context and adding another layer of depth to the understanding of the Bible. Now that we've met the Caesars, let's dig a little deeper into their stories. While Julius Caesar does not appear in the Bible directly, his influence was undeniable. This statement might surprise some of you, but let's delve deeper into the historical context. Julius Caesar, the renowned Roman general, statesman, and historian, reigned as dictator from 49 to 44 BC. Although his reign predates the New Testament, his actions set the stage for the Roman Empire's prominence during the Biblical era. Consider this. Julius Caesar's rise to power marked the end of the Roman Republic and the birth of the Roman Empire. This monumental shift in political structure had far-reaching consequences, including in regions like Judea, which is the setting for much of the New Testament. Under Caesar's leadership, Rome expanded its territories and solidified its status as a superpower. His policies, particularly those related to citizenship and governance, transformed the empire. For instance, he extended Roman citizenship to people in far-off provinces, fostering a sense of unity and loyalty among diverse populations. This unity and the relative peace it brought, known as Pax Romana, made travel and communication easier across the vast Roman Empire. This facilitated the spread of ideas and beliefs, including the teachings of a certain carpenter from Nazareth, Jesus Christ. The establishment of the Roman Empire under Julius Caesar indirectly created a platform for the rapid spread of Christianity. Moreover, Caesar's assassination and the subsequent power struggle led to his adopted heir, Octavian, later known as Augustus Caesar, assuming power. It was during the reign of Augustus that Jesus was born, as per the biblical narrative. So, while Julius Caesar himself never strides across the pages of the Bible, his influence permeates the New Testament. His reign helped shape the political and social landscape into which Jesus was born and under which early Christianity flourished. Although Julius Caesar doesn't appear directly, his legacy certainly does, but what about the other two Caesars? Let's explore that in the next scene. Augustus and Tiberius Caesar, unlike Julius, do appear in the Bible. Now let's shift our focus to two other Caesars who made their mark in the biblical narrative, Augustus and Tiberius. Their influence and interactions within the Bible are far more direct and significant. 
Firstly, we have Augustus Caesar, the first Roman emperor. The Bible mentions him in the Gospel of Luke where it tells us that Mary and Joseph traveled to Bethlehem because of a census ordered by Augustus. This event was monumental in the biblical timeline as it set the stage for the birth of Jesus Christ in Bethlehem, fulfilling the prophecy mentioned in the book of Micah. In this way, Augustus unknowingly played a part in the divine plan. On the other hand, Tiberius Caesar, the second Roman emperor, is mentioned by name in the Gospel of Luke as well. His reign was during the active ministry of John the Baptist and Jesus Christ. Tiberius Caesar indirectly influenced the biblical narrative through Pontius Pilate, who was a governor during his reign. Pilate, as we know, played a crucial role in the trial and crucifixion of Jesus. It's fascinating, isn't it? How these two Caesars, who may not have been aware of the magnitude of their actions, became intertwined in the greatest story ever told. Their decisions, driven by political and administrative reasons, were instrumental in shaping key events of the Bible. And while these two Roman emperors may not have had an intimate knowledge of the Jewish faith or its prophecies, their actions set in motion a series of events that were pivotal to the biblical narrative. It's a testament to how, in the grand scheme of things, individuals can unknowingly contribute to a larger divine plan. So in exploring the lives of Augustus and Tiberius Caesar, we find that their roles in the Bible weren't merely as historical figures. They were, in their own rights, facilitators of prophecy, their lives intricately woven into the biblical narrative. So, we see that both Augustus and Tiberius played significant roles in the biblical narrative. So, when the Bible mentions Caesar, who is it referring to? Well, to put it simply, Caesar is not a reference to a single individual but rather a title synonymous with the Roman Emperor. The term Caesar originates from the famous Julius Caesar, whose adopted son, Octavian, took the title upon his father's death and became the first Roman Emperor. From then on, it became a tradition for all Roman Emperors to adopt the title Caesar. In the New Testament of the Bible, we encounter references to three different Caesars, each ruling in a different period and playing a unique role in the biblical narrative. Firstly, we have Julius Caesar, the originator of the title. While he isn't directly mentioned in the Bible, his actions and influence on the Roman Republic set the stage for the events of the New Testament. Julius Caesar's adoption of Octavian, his subsequent assassination, and the power vacuum it created led to the rise of the Roman Empire. The second Caesar we encounter is Octavian, better known as Augustus Caesar. He is the Caesar in power during the birth of Jesus Christ, as mentioned in the Gospel of Luke. Augustus Caesar's decree for a census of the entire Roman world led Mary and Joseph to Bethlehem, setting the stage for the birth of Jesus. Lastly, we have Tiberius Caesar who reigned during the ministry of Jesus Christ. Under Tiberius's rule, Jesus was crucified, a pivotal event in Christian history. So, when we talk about Caesar in the Bible, we're referring to these different rulers of the Roman Empire. Each played a significant role in shaping the world at the time, and indirectly, the events recorded in the New Testament. So the next time you read about Caesar in the Bible, remember, it's not just one man, but a title carried by many.